if you've been investing in gold and silver and you've been watching the fraudulent activity by the banks and the CFTC in this market, wondering, are there options? Well, turns out there are already plenty. Well, hello there, my friends. Chris Mark is here with you for Arcadia Economics. And today, a quick video about some of the legal options, an update in terms of if you've been investing in gold and silver and you've been watching the fraudulent activity by the banks and the CFTC in this market, wondering, are there options? Well, turns out there are already plenty. I'm cooking up a bunch more as we speak and investigating all possibilities. Also have a team of volunteers going on this one now too. And uh, anybody is interested in getting more directly involved, you can email the big silver short at arcadeeconomics.com. Um, because I think the good part is there's plenty of evidence. <clears throat> hey, maybe the legal system in the US is a little uh, less than tip top, but I think there's also a lot to be said for doing what you can, pursuing the leads and with that said, let's dig in and cover some of the ones that are available. Although real quick, before we begin, I would like to mention that today's video is brought to you by Keith Anderson over at Silver Sands. who you've seen on the show a, a few times, Silver Sands, as we see last month, uh, drilling discovers new high grade zone at Eli Central at their Virginia Silver Sands project. You can see down here 9.98 meters at 560 grams per ton. Uh, including 2.87 uh, meters at 1,578 grams per ton. And as Keith mentions, phase two drilling has confirmed his hypothesis that drilling known veins along strike will result in an expansion of the current resources and define the Virginia project as a significant silver project, which I would say in the face of the global hyperinflation campaign would be a good thing. So link to find out more about silver sands in the description field below. And with that said, let us dig into the action of today's video because we will start here. Gold price class action lawsuit alleges market manipulation, uh, an Ontario class action lawsuit seeking $1 billion in damages on behalf of gold investors against several of the uh, fraudulent financial institutions is alleging gold market prices were being manipulated. I feel pretty confident to, uh, at least based on what I've seen to take away the alleging uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's plenty of evidence out there is the good part. And now we can, you know, there's no timeline. We can just continue uh, looking at different options. So the reason I bring this one up here is Julius D. Filippo and David Karen, who I met when I was still through Facebook anyway, uh, not personally, but including Bank of Nova Scotia, Barclays, Deutsche Bank, and here you see that it was going on for a while. But what is interesting, on May 29th, 2019, the Ontario Superior Court of Justice approved a settlement by paying the class members $3 million. Now, it was not entirely clear to me how many people were involved, but let's go back there. These guys paid out money. This is the second time Deutsche Bank's been involved in something that's paying out money. My guess is that a lot of people don't even bother applying for these things. Uh, I know it's easy to say, well, the banks are always gonna rig the markets and there's nothing we can do. Yet, I really, if there's one thing I could do is hopefully shift that mindset a bit because, you know, you don't always have to climb the whole mountain in one afternoon, but here, these guys went and they got 3 million. And, you know, there's a lot of precedents being set here uh, some interesting precedents that came up in a conversation I had today, which we'll get to later in this video. But if you look here, Koski Minsky, who I called last week, actually did hear back from, not spoken to the person yet, but here is manipulate gold price manipulation class action. Uh, you see the law firms of Koski Minsky, Sotos, and Kemp Fiorante, Matthews Mogerman, which really rolls right off the tongue are going after these banks here. Interestingly, it seems like JP Morgan has been left off, which uh, knowing how much Jamie Dimon likes his bank getting fined. The infamous quote you may have heard in a recent video when he just told Elizabeth Warren to fine him because his bank can afford it. He didn't care if he's breaking the laws. So that's something that could be involved in a court filing. 
Here is the Sotos page, silver price manipulation, class action. I know you're wondering like, how am I gonna find this stuff? Well, I put it in the description field right there below. And then here is this other one, goldfixsettlement.com. And uh, looks like it actually may be tied to that, the other ones that we just looked at, but here you can submit your claim. So at least what I've done, I have a file that I created years ago from class action that I joined that did not go anywhere, but I at least cal have something calculating damages that I can submit. And uh, perhaps we will go there now because here's this book I've been reading, which I highly recommend, Manipulation on Trial, the Economic Analysis in the Hunt Silver Case by Jeffrey Williams. Boy, this one has been an eye opener so far because what he keeps pointing out, and he was the lawyer for the Hunt Brothers, is how arbitrary the whole thing was. For example, you might be thinking, all right, well, if they tamped down the price when it hit 30 bucks in February, had they not done that, what would the price have gone to? Not necessarily a straightforward thing to calculate. And interestingly, Jeffrey talks about how nobody knew how to calculate it back then. And so far, I'm about a third of the way through. And it strikes me as the typical case where here, you know, the better lawyer, the better, more well presented case really does have an opportunity to make a difference. So that was uh, what happened there. And as I've been reading and I've also been looking at the clauses used that were used to convict the Hans and say, all right, whether I agree or not, that's a legal precedent that was set then make the case that here's JP Morgan, here's Goldman Sachs doing the same and more. So um, certainly would recommend that. And uh, of course you can submit a claim for these as well. Hey, you can say, well, based on this precedent, you think it would have gone to X. And I would say, go ahead and make that claim. At least maybe they'll say you're, they disagree, but it's kind of like the Wild West. Maybe we've been told it's not, but I am an advocate of just, uh, you know, at a relaxed pace, doing what can be done. So anyway, another one here, whistleblower news. Senate unanimously clears Grassley bill to save CFTC whistleblower program. Lessons from the Bernie Madoff Ponzi scheme. Um, kind of interesting to see those two in the same sentence. Uh, I mentioned a week or two ago how the uh, CFTC's whistleblower program is almost going bankrupt because despite that they're only supposed to pay out 10 to 30 percent of the awards, somehow they're giving a lot to the Deutsche Bank guy who blew the whistle on LIBOR. Go figure, yet maybe it just amused me because right below that, uh, CFTC running a Ponzi scheme. Lessons from Bernie Madoff Ponzi scheme, five small rules investors should follow especially because Madoff Talks by Jim Campbell. I am reading that one as well. Yes, I read multiple books at the same time. I think there's 12 going at the moment, although I can't wait to see how those could all be applied to silver when I am done. So anyway, on to our next one here. Here we have JP Morgan Chase and their deferred prosecution agreement. <laughs> Excuse me. One of their deferred prosecution agreements, which... You would think if you have multiple ones, that's kind of defeating the purpose, yet here we are. This is the $920.2 million criminal money monetary penalty. And while it's not in this particular release, actually it is. Under the terms of the deferred prosecution agreement, JP Morgan has agreed to pay a combined 920 for criminal monetary penalty, criminal discouragement, blah, blah, blah. Victim compensation, there we go. 311 of those million dollars were set aside for victim compensation. Now, these guys don't talk about that a lot. And I actually did call because if we scroll down here, where, uh, oh, I'm actually, let me take a step back and I will show you the number, which again will also be along with the link in the description field below. Individuals who believe they may be a victim in this case should visit the fraud section or call that number. When I called, I was told, I'm assuming is accurate, but maybe uh, worth double checking, 
that it was only if you had a specific type of COMEX contract. So if you had equities or physical bullion, they claim that was not valid under the terms of this agreement, which certainly seems a bit silly to me, but at least in terms of the options of what this one is offering. Uh, so I would say that if you do have uh, COMEX contracts that you were holding during that period, you may want to call 888-549-3945. Another note here, it seems like Avi Perry is the chief guy in the FBI. I've tried contacting him, not been in touch yet, but if anyone uh, wants to track down Avi Perry, I have this evidence file over here. Plenty of things to send him, uh, lots of evidence. Here is the letter to Rostin Benham. Here's the rounds of evidence that are clear as day. I would feel comfortable calling them irrefutable evidence. Um, CFTC doesn't have any interest in even attempting to refute it. They just stay silent. But anyway, if someone gets in touch with Avi Perry or Matthew Sullivan or Jonathan Francis, uh, you know, again, if you have extra couple of minutes one day and you can send an email or call any of these guys more people to do that better our chances similarly in the school of thought of keeping at it here we find that the spoofing lawsuit against jp morgan was settled this summer it was filed in 2015 by daniel shack and two other traders and they declined to comment, but they had accused J.P. Morgan of manipulating the silver futures, which obviously they did. I mean, that's been clear now. We have the Department of Justice, CFTC, stating as much. And uh, the three claim they lost tens of million dollars. The bank for years denied the allegations, which means they lied in federal court, or whatever kind of court it was. I think it was federal court. And in 2016, they got the claims dismissed by a judge. Covell then appealed decision, got it reopened. And the case was pending when John Edmonds confessed to the crime. And uh, along with his other unnamed co-conspirators at the bank, manipulated the prices of gold. Uh, so basically, the case was reopened and uh, they got a settlement, which means that rather than going to court, J.B. Morgan wrote out a check which of all the different legal things I'm looking at, getting in touch with David Covell, who is right here. There's his phone number and email. I've sent a few messages. I've had a couple other people send a few messages, have not been in contact yet. Although it's interesting because any manipulations case I've found, his name pops up. I think even in that CFTC whistleblower uh, with Deutsche Bank, he was the one there. So uh, if anyone is able to get in contact with him and you want to pass that along to me, I'd love to speak with him. And uh, you could contact me at the big silver short at arcadeeconomics.com with information about that. Um, so this man did get JP Morgan to write a check and seems like a key figure in that saga. So moving on, a few other notes here. I found this quite interesting because in some of my searching, I came across the uh, little nugget that the Agricultural Committee does oversight for the CFTC. So I called them and said, what, what happens if they're breaking their commitment? And I was told that the subcommittee staff director for commodities includes oversight is Emily German. And her email address, emily.german at mail.house.gov, is also in the description and field below. So feel free to contact her. Uh, and as you can see here, there's also plenty of other people, all these guys that are taking your taxpayer money to do whatever they do. Looks like the Democratic members get pictures. Republican members, they just get names. But feel free to contact any of these people. They're putting their name and swearing an oath to protect you against fraud, like what we've seen out of the CFTC. So there's a bunch of people that can be contacted. Here is a page where agriculture Democrats at mail.house.gov, um, or you can write members of Congress by visiting, contact anyone you feel that you know or might get a response from. So I'd suggest if you have time, 
if you share this or you can contact anyone, you never know who you're going to get a response from. I know it's easy to think and perhaps it's right that, hey, maybe they're all in on it, but I think there's also good people in these things as well. And maybe you're the one who catches one of them on a good day. So I'm an advocate of doing what we can. If a bunch of people start doing that, all of a sudden the odds increase. And again, here's the reminder, these guys, three and a half million dollars. And I'm sure there are more out there. Uh, another way that you can interact with people, we did finally get our forum up on the website. So if you go to the Arcade Economics, at the top menu, there's a community tab. So perhaps someone can, uh, if they have questions or can get this information posted in there. Uh, that's a new place where if you're trying to connect with others, it doesn't have to be just the legal stuff, but uh, we now have a forum. So come on over and share your comments start a new topic there, make some silver friends, or you could talk about signing the petition to ban JP Morgan from trading gold and silver. Up to 4,623 signers. Uh, it's baffling to me why they're still allowed to participate, but that is an option. This is always in the description field of any of the videos. And lastly, here is FOIA.gov. That is the Freedom of Information Act request. And the two things that I am planning to submit requests for are A, the trading records during the last two times we had the big tamp downs, which obviously was this year, February 2nd, tamp down from 30. And also going back 10 years to April uh, 30th, May 1st of 2011, when the price came down from 50. I would love to see those trading records. I mean, it's pretty obvious to me what happened, but let's get the trading records, see some more data on that. And the other thing I'm interested in requesting is that many of you have seen some of those Deutsche Bank transcripts that came out, which were quite incriminating. I'd like to see the JP Morgan transcripts. Does the CFTC look at what these guys were saying? I mean, the, the, I mean, these guys blow away the criminal track record of Deutsche Bank. So those are two things worth requesting. By all means, if you think of something else that's relevant, do it. And if you get anywhere, share it on the forum or email me. And everything that I've heard about freedom of information requests in the past is that usually they're not going to go out of their way to help and make it easy for you. But if you're persistent, you'll often be stunned at what you find. So, you know, hey, don't... And if you're watching this, don't don't try and do everything that I just mentioned in the video. But if you can even find some time in the next week or month, to do one of these steps. And if a hundred people do it or a thousand people do it, you know, you never know who finds out or where the information is spread to. So anyway, just wanted to keep you up to date with some of the options. Again, appreciate Silver Sands for bringing this video and to find out more about them. There's a video uh, with Keith Anderson, who's running Silver Sands, uh, where he talks about what they've been up to. And at least you can find a person running the company. See if that's a good fit for you. And with that said, thank you for being here. And that video with Keith is coming your way now.